Hello everyone, Victor from OrganicChemistryTutor.com is here, and in this video I want to talk about the easy stereodescriptors for alkenes. So let's start by looking at these two molecules. These two molecules are an example of geometric isomers, as the groups are sitting on different sides of the molecule, so the molecules are not superimposable in space, they still do have the same connectivity though. The left molecule has the CH3 groups across from each other, and likewise the hydrogens, the H's, they're across from each other in the molecule as well. Molecules like that we call a trans isomer. The right molecule has the methyl group on the same side, and the uh, hydrogens likewise are on the same side of the molecule as well. We call molecules like this a cis isomer. Pretty easy, right? Well, how about something like that, though? Is it going to be a cis molecule, a trans molecule? And if we are going to be comparing groups, well, which groups are we going to be comparing to begin with? In cases like this, when we cannot use cis or trans stereodescriptors, we have to then use the E or Z nomenclature. So how exactly do we assign the E and Z stereodescriptors? And trust me, it's easy. And I know it's a horrible joke, but I had to. So, step number one, we're going to assign priorities on each atom of the uh, double bond separately. So, essentially, if I look at the example that we had from the previous page, I'm going to rank the blue side of the molecule separate from the purple side of the molecule. On the left, the blue side of my molecule, the chlorine atom gets a higher priority as it has a higher atomic number than the hydrogen atom. On the right side, however, of my molecule, we have a situation when we are comparing two alkyl groups. We are comparing a methyl group to an ethyl group. So the methyl group on top has a lower priority than the ethyl group on the bottom according to the CIP rules, so my highest priority goes to the bottom group. Step number two. For that one, we are going to compare the relative orientation or the location of our highest priority group on each atom. If the highest priorities are on the same side, aka they're cis to each other, this is going to be a Z isomer. So what I have over here I have this group and this group and if those are the highest priority that is going to be the Z isomer. In the case of the E isomer we have the opposite situation where my highest priority, these two groups, would be on the opposite sides of the molecule so that would constitute the E isomer. So for our molecule we have the chlorine and we have the ethyl group, which are the highest priority groups on the corresponding atoms, being on the same side of the molecule, so that makes a Z isomer. All right, let's look at a few examples here and see if we can assign E and Z stereodescriptors to double bonds in these molecules. For molecule number one, I'm going to do this example first. I'm going to split my molecule in half like that, and on the left side, the highest priority is going to go to the methyl group. On the right side, the highest priority is going to go to iodine, because on the first level it is iodine versus carbon, and iodine has the higher atomic number, so overall iodine is going to have the higher priority. My two groups are across from each other like this, which means that according to our rules, this is the E isomer. Next, let's look at the example number two over here. While in this case I do not have my double bond in a horizontal fashion like I have in the previous case, I can still do the same analysis. So now I'm going to be comparing the carbon on top versus the carbon on the bottom. So the top carbon is connected to carbon versus oxygen on the first level, and at that point the oxygen is going to have higher priority, so that's going to get uh, my high priority mark. On the bottom, what I have is a carbon atom versus a hydrogen atom. Remember that over here we have the implicit hydrogen, so we need to keep that in mind, and it's not just empty space, there is a hydrogen over there. And in this case, we have the carbon versus hydrogen, so the carbon is going to get the higher priority as well, and now the two groups, they are on the opposite side of the double bond as well, so this is also 
an E stereoisomer. Now, when it comes to example number three, well, for that one, I actually have two double bonds. However, here is something extremely important. The first double bond, I'm going to highlight it over here in pink, we do have two hydrogens on the terminal carbon over here. And if we have two of the same group attached to a carbon, well, none of those can have a higher priority, and the geometric isomerism for that specific double bond is physically impossible. So although this is a double bond, we cannot assign cis or trans or E or Z stereodescriptor to that one. So for this guy, we have no stereodescriptor available. However, for my other double bond, I'm going to highlight it in green like that, we can do the EZ stereodescriptor analysis, and as always, I'm going to split the double bond in half. On the left side, I have carbon, which is attached to oxygen, versus another carbon, so at that point, the oxygen is going to get the higher priority, and I don't need to do this analysis any further for the left side. On the right side, I have carbon, which is attached to carbon above and carbon below. On the first level, I don't see any difference, so I need to see further what's going on there. The top carbon is going to be attached to one real oxygen, one phantom oxygen from the double bond, and another real oxygen. The bottom one, however, is connected to three hydrogens. So I have one, two, and three hydrogen. And since oxygens, they do have higher priority than hydrogens, at this point we see our first difference, and uh, we have the two groups being across from each other, uh, according to the CAP rules, that is going to be the E stereoisomer as well. And finally, if we look at example number four, for that one, I have my double bond hiding in the middle of the molecule over here. I will highlight it in green as well. I also do have a uh, carbon-oxygen double bond, but since we only have groups on the carbon but not on the oxygen, the only thing that we do have on this oxygen is electron pairs, we also cannot assign E or Z stereodescriptor to that bond, so that one is not going to get any. Now, going back to my green double bond, so for that one, I have carbon-carbon double bond. On the left side, I have carbon attached to a nitrogen versus carbon. Since nitrogen has a higher atomic number than carbon, nitrogen gets priority on the left. On the right, well, for that one, I first have a carbon versus carbon. No difference here, so like in the last case, I will have to go to the next level and see what those carbons are attached to. On top, I have the connection to three separate hydrogens, while on the bottom, I have a couple of hydrogens and I have another connection to a carbon atom. So at that point, we have the higher priority because the carbon has a higher priority than hydrogens, so my bottom group is going to get higher priority overall, which means that now, if I am comparing my priorities and how they orient themselves around the double bond, I have two highest priority looking in the same direction, or they're cis to each other, so that is going to be the Z stereodescriptor for this molecule. Thank you for watching this quick tutorial on easy stereo descriptors. I hope you find it helpful. And if you like it, hit the like button, subscribe, enable the notifications to make sure that you don't miss any of my future videos. Leave any of your questions and comments below, and I'll see you in the next one.